I really like this look for a festival and if you guys are interested in seeing how I got this look, then just keep watching. Okay, so first, I'm going to be prepping my skin. So for that, I'm going to be using a toner. This one is specifically for when you're about to do your makeup. This is the pre-makeup skin toner. This is going to help like smooth out any like bumps on your skin and just kind of like smooth it out. And you don't need a lot of it. And you're just going to put a little bit on a tissue and then you're just going to wipe it all over your face. The next thing that I'm going to use is this Cara Moisturizer. And I'm just going to be using about two pumps of this on my face. So next I'm going to be using the Velvet Finish Primer Serum. I'm just going to be putting one pump of this on my face. Since I don't want my pores to show a lot, I have really big pores, so I'm going to be using this other primer just right here where I have big pores. I get it also on my forehead, so I'm going to be putting a little bit there. So since I do get oily like right here and on my forehead, I'm going to be using some of the Touch Up Anti Shine. This is just going to help your makeup later from smudging and just pretty much disappearing by the end of the day. So first I'm going to be using this Cara um, cream foundation and I'm going to be putting this under my eyes. And then um, I found that it wasn't really my skin color like in natural daylight. So I'm just going to be going in with a darker foundation kind of lower here. But I really like how natural this foundation looks so I'm going to use it as much as I can like on this area of my face and below the contour line I'm going to go in with a darker shade. This is a flat brush and I'm just going to be um, going in with that and just placing it under my eye. For the rest of my face I'm going to be mixing two foundations. This one's the LA Girl Pro Coverage. This one is in the shade Warm Beige. And then I'm going to be going in with the Dream Liquid Mousse. This one is in the shade Dark 2. Now using this blending sponge, I'm just going to be blending everything in. When you're blending, make sure you don't apply much pressure if you want high coverage. But if you really don't want anything too high coverage, then you can go a little bit harder, like just press it in a little bit more. But wherever you do want high coverage, you don't want to dab it too hard. So now for concealer, I'm going to be using this uh, Maybelline Age Rewind and I'm going to be putting this under my eyes, on my forehead, down my chin, and down the bridge of my nose. Now to cream contour my face, I'm going to be using the LA Girl Pro Concealer. I can't find the shade, sorry. I'm just going to start by dotting some of the concealer on the top of my forehead. Now with the same blending sponge, you're just going to blend it all in. It blends so fast and so easy. I think that's why it's like one of my favorite concealers. It's not super thick and it just gets the job done. I have a really greasy face so I like to bake because it just sets my makeup for the rest of the day and I don't have to worry about it like slipping and melting off. And my favorite is the Air Spun Translucent Powder. I talk about this in almost every single one of my videos. It is honestly one of my favorites, one of the best hands down. I'm just going to be grabbing a brush and I'm just going to be tapping in the powder. So to comb out my brows, I basically just used a spoolie, any regular spoolie will do, and you just comb out any crustiness, any powder that got stuck in between your brows. So when you're doing your brows, you have a nice clean base to work with. So first step is to line the bottom eyebrow. Then we're going to get the shape of the top. You want to start at the tail first because it is the thinnest. So most of the product will just end up there. So it's a really dark brow. So we're going to start blending this part in and try to leave the emptiest amount here. 
And you can go back in with a concealer and brush it off. You're gonna start lining the bottom here and really sharpening it up. Now we can dust off any of the excess powder. As you can see, a lot of it sunk into my oils, so you can tell I'm already an oily person. But this helps uh, a lot if you're oily skinned. As you can see, not a lot of it's coming off anymore, so yay. It's soaked in perfectly, and now we can start doing the uh, contour, but with the powders. So this is the Contour and Highlight Palette. That is from Moran Cosmetics. It has a variety of colors. And for that, I'm gonna be using a contour brush. This is an angled brush, so we're gonna start by lining the brush like that and working our way in. Any of the spots that we cream contoured, that's where we're going to powder contour. So you just go over those spots again. We're gonna grab a, uh, a different brush. This is another contouring brush. And we're going to intensify the look now. So I'm thinking to intensify it, I'm gonna be using this color. You only wanna intensify here and at your temples, you don't wanna go up here. So the highlighter I'm going to be using today is from Laura Geller. This one is in the shade Gilded Honey. It's a very popular shade. Continuing on with the eyes, I'm going to be using a blending brush and I'm going to start off with a soft pink color as a transition shade. And the color I'm gonna be using is this uh, top light pink and it's kind of like this peachy tone and we're gonna start off with that color. So the trick to good blending is not to have too much control, not to have too much pressure when you're doing your transition shade. Well, the best way to do that is blend from the end of your brush here. That way you don't have so much control, just enough so you know where you're placing it, but not enough to put a lot of pressure. Then using another blending brush that's a little bit more precise, we're going to be going in a little deeper into the crease and we're going in with a second transition color. So the second transition color is this dark pink in between the purples, and we're gonna start deepening the crease. Again, you don't wanna go too harsh with your brush. Uh, tap off any excess on the brush, and you wanna start going in lightly. Now we're going in with the deepest transition color that we need. This is going to be going in with a more precise brush. So I've already been testing this look out a little bit before I filmed it, so my brush is still dirty, but whatever, we're gonna move on. Uh, so yeah, I'm going, I'm going to be going in with that red color and I'm just gonna be working that really into the crease. So after we have all our transition shades there, we're going to be going back with the first transition brush that we had and going back with um, some of the color that we originally went in with. We're just gonna bring back that color because some of it did go away. And as you can see, it's coming back. So now that that's all blended in, we're gonna be going in with a flat brush. I'm gonna be going in with this one and we're gonna start carving out our lid. To carve out the lid, I'm just going to be going in with this foundation. This is the HD Cream Foundation in Medium 2. I think it's the lightest one I have. And you really want to take your time with this. You don't want to just swipe it and assume that it's going to be okay because this is those kind of tedious things that you really do want to take your time with. So you don't really need to be precise at the end here because we are going to go in with a darker color to blend the lid color and the crease colors. So for the inner part of my lid, I'm going to be going in with this precious gem powder from Moran. This is in the color Pearl. I'm gonna be tapping some of it onto the cap. I'm going to be going in with a flat brush. This is just any regular flat brush. And I'm gonna start, and I'm gonna start tapping it into the inner part of the lid. And again, you really wanna be careful, don't move outside of where you placed your foundation. 
Now that we have the lid color placed, we're going to be going in with a color in the middle. And that color that I'm going to be using in the middle is going to be this uh, neon pink. Because it's kind of like that in the middle color. So for that, you just want to be going in with any flat brush. Uh, I'm just going to be going in with this one from Urban Decay. You want to start at the outer corner and work your way in. Just so it kind of creates like this gradient. After you created that gradient with the pink, then we're going to be going in with the really cool pigment. This is also from Muran. This is in the shade Ruby. Getting your pigments wet in any brand is just going to intensify the look. So I really recommend this if you want to have a more um, intense look. I'm going to be loading in a flat brush. And this is going to also help the precision. Now we're going to blend these uh, colors together and I'm going to be mixing first this red color from my Brights palette and I'm going to be going in with that color first just to bring it back. I'm going to be going in with my Naked Basics palette and I'm going to be going in with the color Faint. It's the dark brown color. Loading it up and we're going to start lining the outer V and then going deep in the crease, just the outer crease though. Really wanna brighten the inner corners. You can go back in with the color uh, pearl, the pigment, and put it in the inner corner. And this is going to just tie in the eyeshadow really nicely in my opinion. Since I am wearing this flower crown, I am going to go in with a bottom color. I'm going to be using this uh, green and this green. I'm going to be going in with the dark green on the outside corner and then as I work my way into the inner corner then I'm going to kind of lighten it. So now we're going to move on with the eyeliner. The eyeliner I like to use is classically this NYX matte liquid eyeliner and you want to make sure your eyebrow and your wing match up. Let's just pretend they keep going infinitely and wherever they would naturally match up, that's the angle you want to go towards. That's just a rule of thumb. And then from there, you want to connect it towards the middle here, at this middle point of your eye. And then you're going to fill in the rest. So now I'm going to apply the lash directly on the top of the lash line, but still on your skin. And just place it as best as you can. So if my lighting looks a little weird, it's because my two side lights went out, died, my bad. I'm taking my sweet time here. Okay, so I'm just going to be applying the next lash here. So after they're placed, you just want to go back in with some eyeliner and just line the top again so there's no like traces of lash glue. And you don't have to be the best, you just do it on top of there. This is my ultimate favorite mascara, so we're going to go back with it. This is a Maybelline Lash Sensational Mascara. And we're just going to do very easily um, a light coat on the top lashes and the bottom lashes. So for the lips, I'm going to be going with this lip cream from Moran. This one is in the color Xenia. Xenia. And it's like this nice orangish but pinkish color. So it's looking a little too orange for this look, so I'm going to be going in with um, some of this red pigment. This is the one in the color ruby, the one we used like in the outer corner. I'm just going to start patting it on. Alright, so I just put the crown on and the look is now officially complete. Uh, I did wavy hair because I had braids in last night, so I was like, you know, It'll just go with it. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you want to keep up with my videos, just click subscribe. And any questions you have about the products, uh, they will be in my description below. And if you have any further questions, you can just comment and I'll get back to you. And that's it for today's video. I hope you guys liked it. Bye, guys.